Proverbs 16, 21. The wise in heart shall be called prudent, and the sweetness of the lips increases learning. Wisdom and graciousness combine to make a man be recognized by others and communicate marvelously with them. God has given to Christians a great commission to reach a lost world for Christ. This proverb reveals how to be effective in that. First of all, a wise heart. This is not head knowledge, but the understanding of a discerning heart. The result is prudence, which is acting with or showing care and thought for the future. Secondly, you need to have graciousness in communication. If you have practical wisdom in your heart, you may not know how to communicate to others to gain their trust, calm their fears, satisfy their questions, or change their minds. There are men and women with discernment and prudence who leave no mark on the world because their abrupt, callous, insensitive, or rude communication turns others off. This is a great waste, for the wisdom that could serve others never gets to them. You know, souls are too precious not to have a, for us not to have an effect on them. Proverbs 11.30 says, The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. If we're going to win them to Christ, the sweetness of our speech will cause others to listen more intently. The proverb says, chapter 15, 23, A man hath joy by the answer of his mouth, and a word spoken in due season. How good is it? Such graciousness will even get the attention of kings. Proverbs 22, 11, He that loveth pureness of heart, for the grace of his lips the king shall be his friend. To increase the learning of others, you must acquire both practical wisdom and gracious speech. Proverbs 16, 24 says, Pleasant words are as a honeycomb, sweet to the soul, and health to the bones. The lips of the wise disperse knowledge, but the heart of the foolish doeth not so. Proverbs 15, 7. Then chapter 27, 9 says, Ointment and perfume rejoice the heart, so doth the sweetness of a man's friend by hearty counsel. Every minister of the gospel needs to understand the tremendous need for gracious and sound speech. In Titus 2, 7 and 8 says, In all things showing thyself a pattern of good works, in doctrine showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. Psalm 119, verse 130 says, The entrance of thy words give light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. Ephesians 4, 29 says, Let no communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good of the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Colossians 4, 6 says, Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man.